Now you talked about doing a little time before. Was that just jail time, or you done prison uh, time? Yeah, I, I done. I done did a little prison time. You know what I'm saying? I did like two years back, '06 to '08. I did uh, two years down at a uh, medium federal prison down in Salter, South Carolina. And um, basically, you know, it gave me enough time to think, you know what I'm saying, and uh, uh, decide what I want to do. Because that time when I was taken away, I had a two year old daughter, which is my oldest daughter, Naomi. She's 12. And it was like, it was crazy, man. Like, to come home when she was big. And just like, I got a second child now. So everything I messed up on the first, I made sure I corrected on the second. And it's like, you learn when you're in there because it ain't nothing like the same pattern every day. It's the same thing every day, like that movie Groundhog Day. And it get old quick. Did you rap inside? Oh yeah, you know, we always had our, uh, we'd get together, have our little sessions and stuff. Some people battle, you know. You got South Carolina, North Carolina, we were mostly together. Then you got all your different states, you got Texas, you got Florida, you got Chicago, you got New York, you got the Cali Boy, you know what I'm saying? Everybody is like they own stuff. The North Carolina was more like clicked up with South Carolina because we were Carolina, so we used to get together, you know, do our thing and stuff. But it's like basically that's what all my raps and different stuff, you know, that I come up with. It's just, it's like a journal, it's just a story from a page of my book, you know what I'm saying? 85% of it, I would say. You know, some of the stuff you gotta finesse and, you know, make it nice for the people. But most of most of it are real, though. What are some do's and don'ts inside prison, maybe for someone first time about to go in? Uh, man. Just keep it 100, man. Like, I'm, I'm going to say, like, man, all the time, I've probably been locked up over about, i say about eight times. You know, they be short bids two months, or sometimes I just be a day or two, you know. But most of the time, like, I, re I really don't, probably got in, like, one fight out of all the bids. But other than that, like, like, I always stay to myself. I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, I lay back, I'm gonna watch and observe. So you go in there, you stay to yourself, but if somebody try you, you got you can't back down. Even if you can't fight, try to fight. It, they gonna respect you. At least you try, you know what I'm saying? But you just gotta be ready, you know? It ain't like these movies, oh, they gonna rape you and all that. No, that ain't never happened. You might jack your, sh you know what I'm saying? But. <laughs> you ain't gonna get raped, you, you know, it's, it's crazy. If you get raped, you wanted to get raped. It's like that, like, you stay to yourself, you go in there, rah, 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 selling them wolf tickets. Somebody gonna put you to sleep. Somebody gonna lay you across that float, you know what I'm saying? If you go in there, lay back like me, everybody say I bought my money, you know what I'm saying? I gamble, I just, you know, find something, I read, you know, I went through like the whole Donald Goins collection. I read a lot of different books, you know what I'm saying? A lot of street books. That it take you back out there, you know what I'm saying? Free your mind. So, you know, you just stay to yourself. Ain't don't nobody know you. They gon they gonna question, like, do I need to try and he quiet? Oh what I know, you know what I'm saying? So you get in there, man, you just stay to yourself and and make sure you clicking. Make sure you got some commissary. Because if you eating good and stay to yourself, they're like, okay, he was somebody out there. You know what I'm saying? Even if he wasn't, at least you look like it enough. You know what I'm saying? You got oodles and noodles and fudge rinds and sausage sticks, all that stuff, and sodas or whatever drinks. They, you know, you looking good. They like, boy, who is he? They going to they gonna come over and try to talk to you and all that. But, you know, keep conversation short. You know, you, you can feel the real from the fake, so you know who to mess with, who not to. I used to mess with the Migos. But the essay know how to treat one another, man. Like, we come in, we get locked up. That person over there, that person over there, they all looking hard, you know. Amigo come in, 
As soon as he come in, he ain't, man, they meeting him at the door. Come on. They bringing their brother right over there to the corner. It was four of them, now it's five of them. By the end of the week, it'd be 12 of them. They all over there, huddled up. And they got, they got have one sandwich. They cut in four pieces between the four of them. The next day, one sandwich. Cut in the five pieces between the five of them. By the end of the week, when the 12 of them there, that one sandwich gonna be cut up in 12 pieces. And when I when I seen that, I was like, man, that's real right there. Like, we don't we don't do do, do stuff like that, man. We we selfish. We think we independent. We think about our damn self, man. And they they just unite and come together. And that's what you need to do to get further in life. You need a team. You can't do it by yourself. You might get far by yourself, but you it might come to somewhere where you like if you in the jungle. And you come to a, a wall or something, a cliff or something, you can't get, get over by yourself, but you got that extra person to help you. You climb on them, get climb on the shoulder and get up there. Now you can reach down and pull him up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all over there, but you couldn't do that by yourself. I know I'm crazy, I'm high. I talk all day, let's get it. <laughs> now during your two year uh, prison bid, what's the craziest shit you've seen? Oh man, man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I stayed on the poker table or the skin table. So I dreamed, slept, poker. And I seen crazy stuff like, I seen, you know, I ain't got no problems with gays. But you know, we call them punks on the yard, you know what I'm saying? If you gay, you gay. You know, I played cards with one, one gay dude. He was a prince or something. He was from Miami. He was cool as hell, you know what I'm saying? And that's when I the homophobia went away. I used to be like, oh, that's a faggot. That's a, you know what I'm saying? I didn't understand him, but after being in prison, and it was a cool one. And he played, he had that bread, so he'd come on to my table. He was cool, though, as long as he ain't trying nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? But we had this one hit the yard, man. <sighs> Bruh had titties and everything, man. And I don't understand how they let him on the yard. Like, it was crazy. Like, boom, he hit the yard. They went crazy. I was like, what the world? And I had a double look. I was like, what the hell did I just see? So that was one of the craziest things, man. Other than that, you know, shh, the boy get to, get to stabbing with them knives, man. Them essays, they, they to be the main ones. <laughs> they be going hard. Like, then again, that was in the county jail where they was all cool on the on federal yard. It's different, boy. You got different essays. They don't mess with each other, man. And they get to pushing them damn swords. And I know now it's them swords. And it be on lock now. And mess it up for everybody. Eating out the tray. Out the little slot in the, in the cell. But I ain't see too much. You know, I did, like I said, I did two years. And everybody be like, hey, I always be like, yeah, I did a little two years. Everybody be like, man, that, that, that ain't little. It's little, bro, when you do fair. Like, like them boys in there ain't getting out. Them boys in there coming home and they, they great granddaddies. You know what I'm saying? So it's real, man. Like, I just stayed to myself. I made sure I got up out of there. <laughs> Have you seen that show Lockdown on MSNBC? Uh, no. Nah. I ain't seen that right now. Okay, I was just curious. Um, I done seen it in real life. I ain't got to see it again. <laughs> I was going to ask if that was an accurate depiction of prison. Nah, you ever seen The Orange is the New Black? I, I personally have not. Now, that is more real, like, because, like, I was tripping off it. My girl made me watch it, and it was by the girl federal prison, but it was real, like, the ID badges everything, how they had the counselors, how you go to the shoe, like, I was like, man, this is real right here. It was, it was trippy, it was funny. Now, what kept you motivated inside? Oh, man, my baby girl, man. I had to get that on a little mama. It's like, shh, like, that was my heart. Like, she kind of slowed me down. Like, I used to go real hard in the streets, and then, when she came aboard, I kind of slowed down. But like the things I went hard on, it came back and haunt me. And they grabbed me up, you know what I'm saying? But 
I had already chilled out, but it was some old stuff, you know, we from Grammy for some old stuff, but, you know, I had already chilled on what I was doing, so it was all good, because it was just a, 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 a rude awakening, you know what I'm saying, wake up call, I was like, man, I need to do something better, and basically that's when I went hard with the music when I came home, you know, I, I was doing my thing, but I wasn't really doing my thing, like, I'm in the trap, serving, <laughs> and spitting on the mic at the same time, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, the homie Pocket came through. But before he came through, like he used to have this open mic night. And I went through there, and I called him outside by his car, like, yo, let's check my CD out. Yeah, he popped it in, then he turned around and went to talking to somebody on me. Man, I looked, I was like, man, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? I popped, it, popped the CD out, just walked off on him. You know what I'm saying? About a year later, he knocking at the trap. I'm like, man, I'm like, what up? You know, I, I got resentment. I'm feeling funny. Well, I'm funny, man. So I'm like, what up? He's like, man, nigga, let me hear some of your music, man. What you doing, man? Uh, you got some good music. I'm like, man, I'm like, it's straight. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I'm just doing some, man, you need to do something with it. Uh, I know Shot of Red, this and that. They said, I know we was at Shot of Red House like a week later and grabbing some beats and stuff. And like, we ain't never looked back since. Like, and I just started investing into myself. Like, I took the street money and, you know, it used to be like 80, 20%. Then next thing I know, it was like 75, 25%. Then it jumped more like 50, 50. Then it was like the streets. 40, 60, music 60, the next thing I know is like, if I knew it, that shit was like 100 over here. I like, everybody like, what's up, man? I, like, bro, I ain't doing nothing, man. I ain't got time to do nothing. I'm on the road, I'm doing this music. Like, bro, I'm blessed right now. Like, I ain't, I ain't the richest in the world, but it's paying the bills, man, and keeping me out of the streets. So, I'm blessed right now. Like, probably all off subject from what you asked me. <laughs> You know what it is. It's all good. <laughs> now, El Chapo escaped for a second time. Hey, man. He gonna always escape. Shout out to El Chapo, man. Just don't, you know, kill no innocent people, you know. But, you know, he gonna always do it, man. He got the bread, bro. He, he owned everything. Like, they gonna bring him home, man. It's like, it could be, it don't matter, man. You could be the straightest person turn down every bribe in the world. Let your damn daughter need that kidney and that, that thing, 200,000. El Chapo say, I got a meal for you right now. If you just leave the door unlocked, what's gonna happen? End the story. Shout out to El Chapo, keep that bread long, baby. Now, did you ever have thoughts of breaking out? Oh, man, like, I, man. Dreamed it and thought it every day, man. It don't matter if you a short term or not, you like, man. There used to be times where I be in there with no bond and I'm just sitting so it ain't no knowing when you gonna get out. It's like, man, you just here, man. You, and they done push your court off three more months, man. Man, you know what I'm saying? They keep pushing off, you just sitting here. And like, and now you sit there, look at the window, the little window, I see the milk truck pull up. I be like, man, I could be up under the damn milk truck like that. You know what I'm saying? Just thinking some old moves, man. And like, I think Weezy said it in a uh, rap. He was like, he dreamed every night that he broke out or something. And like, when I heard that, I laughed so hard because I said, now that's for real. I said, I know he ain't lying. I said, I used to dream that dream all the time, man. But yeah, man, it was crazy. I know some dudes that broke out one time too. It was down in Savannah. And I was in Ch Chatham County Jail. and. It was crazy because they was in my dorm. <laughs> it was one guy they used to call the realist. He used to call himself the realist. He thought he was like Tupac. He had the bald head, but he had the big eyes. He, he probably gonna see this like, nigga. But he had the big eyes and he looked like the, the white dude on Weird Science, the bald head crazy dude to come in on the motorcycle that looked weird. He looked like him, but a black version. And he called himself the realist. Like, it was him and a white boy twin. Like, they were twin brothers. Like, they, they, he was talking about how he was gonna break out. Like, he had a little paper clip. Next thing I know, we was looking on the news the next day and they had court and they broke out on the van and they, you know what I'm saying? 
he, he got loose and it was him, the realest. I was like, oh my God. I said, bro, they really did it, man. Like, it's crazy. Just like when I came home for the fence, my bunk mate, the Puerto Rican cat, he robbed the bank. All the marshals came, got him just like that. And he was like crying to me, like, man, I can't buy my baby nothing. This. I said, bro, you could be home for your baby. That's a Christmas present. I said, man, I ain't get my baby nothing this Christmas. But she gonna understand. Daddy ain't got it. Daddy free, though. I said, the next Christmas and the other Christmases gonna be right. And I just thugged it out, you know what I'm saying? He, he couldn't wait. And he, I'm talking about, he in the halfway house. He just came home from prison, man. Well, he ain't home a month or two, probably. And he back right in prison, just trying to get that fast money, man.